Let me show you a picture on a nice, calm winter's day. Uh, an image that will warm your heart, okay? Look at this image. Doesn't this just make you feel happy? Doesn't this just make you feel happy? It's a, a big wig corporate CEO of PlayStation about to retire at London Studios for PlayStation. This is a PlayStation studio. They do mostly VR stuff. And I mean, just look at all of the smiling faces. Everybody's so excited to get to meet their great leader. Sure, he looks like a thumb, but they don't worry about that. They're just glad to be meeting him. They're all so happy. I'm sure this isn't foreboding. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with any of this. Well, what if I told you that five days after this, just five days, all of these people were fired. Would you believe me? Would you buy that? Would you, would you buy that? Cause that's what happened. That's what happened. Sony PlayStation CEO, Jim Ryan was at PlayStation studios five days ago. Today, he announced the entire studio is being closed. He came here as part of a like send off event where he, of course he's from London. Uh, and that's where he predominantly works. And so he came here to basically say goodbye because he's retiring, he's leaving. And one of the very last things he did was to say goodbye to this studio. And just a few days later, all of these people were, uh, were laid off, which is really, really, I don't know, man. It's really cringe, really cringe. Cause like you can see, they're all like farewell, Jim Ryan salute. And they're all like fighting the good fight. Let's get it. Not realizing he knew at this time he was laying all of them off. He knew like all of these people are about to lose their jobs, but he still goes, still smiles, takes photos. It just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, right? It's a bad taste. Now, I, of course, understand layoffs. I understand that in order to run a successful business, there are times where you do have to look at it as a spreadsheet. You can't look at like London studios and say, oh, this is hundreds of human beings. I'm about to ruin their, their lives potentially by laying them off. If you want to run a successful multi-billion dollar corporation, I understand sometimes you have to be very cold hearted. We don't have to like that, but I understand if we're trying to run a multi-billion dollar business, you have to be a little psychotic uh, or sociopathic or whatever you want to say. I can understand that. But normally you don't see somebody going and shaking hands and smiling and rubbing elbows. Literally their elbows are rubbing days before you screw them all over. And that's what makes it feel particularly cold blooded. If he just kept in his office far away and he's like, like if, if I were in his position, I'd be like, bro, I don't want to go meet all these people I'm about to destroy. Cause one of the other things you have to remember about this, that makes this layoff particularly, uh, sort of gross is that a lot of these people are on work visas. So my understanding with work visas is like, if you lose your employment with that visa, all of a sudden your visa is is not doing what it needs to do. And so you're gonna have to leave. So people have uprooted their entire lives, moved to London from wherever they are from in the world. And now they're just screwed because their job has disappeared. You know, losing your job on a work visa is an actual nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And that's why like the, the out of nowhere announcement here is what's really, really, Terrible. Proto says, yeah, Luke, a friend of mine was working in PlayStation in R&D and she got laid off yesterday too. She's on a work visa too. Poor girl had just taken a break to go back home. Jesus. So I, I think like we, we can all see it's a business. Sometimes messy decisions have to be made, but it's really, as, as this person says, it's uh, like such poor taste to do this. Then five days later, lay off the staff, including the ones who posted this picture. It's really, really poor taste. And uh, it just makes you want to scream. And uh, this same person who posted this image posted this. Um, I have nothing to say. I'm in tears. I'm looking for a new job, I guess. So please reach out. I'm numb. And once settled, I may have more to say. And this individual was the associate art manager at London Studio HQ. 
They were working on an unannounced online co-op combat game set in the modern fantasy London that has been canceled and everything shut down. And this was an ex-development manager at Rocksteady. So that's, that's for one, just kind of gross. It just makes you huh, get hibby-jibbies that he, uh, Jim Ryan, would be willing to go and meet, take pictures, rub elbows, pretending like everything's fine, only to totally screw these people over days later. Little, little sociopathic. Um, how this came about was um, described in this article from VGC. Basically, we all, I mean, I, I've been telling you guys for months that this was coming and it's going to continue coming from other studios. A lot of this stuff is going to continue happening in the industry. There are a few core problems in the gaming industry right now that are uncomfortable, but that have to be dealt with. For one, development costs are through the roof. They just are. Like it is, it's outrageous how expensive these games are to put together. Spider-Man 2, a game that's like 17 hours long for most people, cost roughly $300 million. That's more than like most big budget Marvel movies. Like that is outrageous. So they have to find a way to deal with that cost. One of the ways, like there are a few ways you can do that, right? Cost is basically a function of the the amount of money per unit of time. In this case, salaries basically and benefits per person per year. And, or you can break down per month, I guess. And then that's a function of time. So you multiply it by the time of development and that gives you the total cost. And then you add in the costs of fixed variables or independent variables like uh, marketing costs or whatever else. So you can either reduce the initial cost or you can tighten up that uh, variable of time. So you can make games smaller so they take less time to develop. You can develop them more efficiently with tools like generative AI and things like that, uh, procedurally generated worlds, things like that. Or you can shrink down the team so that the thing you're multiplying by time is smaller so the budget's tighter. What these companies are trying to do is a little bit of both. They're trying to shrink the teams so it costs less, and they're also trying to work more efficiently with tools like AI and by by streamlining stuff. When you hear a company describe things as like restructuring, usually that means that they just are looking at their business and they're saying, hey, we have a team of 10 people working on this. We really only need three people doing that. And so they cut seven people and they're just as uh, efficient or rather they're just as productive. They're probably required to be more efficient because now there's less people to do the work and it's, it's not spread as, uh, as evenly around, but they then have a third the cost for achieving the same end. So they're trying to do that. That's one thing. The other thing with this that I think is often misunderstood is that these CEOs and executives are not paid the same way. So a lot of people will look at it and be like, oh, well, Jim Ryan is worth however many tens of millions of dollars, probably. I don't know how much he's actually worth, but he has a ton of uh, Sony stock, no doubt. But that's the key. These employees are not paid with Sony stock. Sony can issue stock whenever they want. If they announce it ahead of time, they get the board of directors to issue stock. It's whatever. Um, it doesn't really cost them anything to do that other than it will dilute the current shares. So it'll bring down the overall value, but it's just a whole thing. As for uh, how these employees are paid, they're paid with liquid cash. Like you have to pay from basically a business checking account out to those guys. Um, which does cost the business money. So this is why you tend to see employees getting their, their pay cut, whereas executives don't see pay cuts because it doesn't really affect the budget if Jim Ryan is given a bigger share of, you know, or a bigger uh, stock option plan. Jim Ryan's estimate, estimated net worth is 250 million. I have to see that, that's a lot. That's a lot, but Maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. I, I'd be surprised if it's that high, but that, that, I mean, that's crazy. Um, so anyway, with, with all this, it's just, they have to find ways to deal with the, the current budget. The way you do that is not by cutting executive compensation. Unfortunately, the way you do that is by cutting lower level compensation that is paid out with liquid 
cash effectively um cutting the budgets of or the the payments of executives won't do anything which is mighty convenient that when a business gets in a time of trouble the executives don't suffer because cutting their pay doesn't really affect the bottom line that much but that's how it's been set up it's almost like it's been set up that way on purpose but uh <laughs> Anyway, with all this, they're just trying to find ways to deal with the core problem of games being too expensive. And we all accept games are too expensive to make right now. They cost outrageous amounts of money. And the only way they can recoup it is with $70 charges. And even then they sometimes do season passes or early access and other ways to try and milk people for more money. The other problem I would argue for PlayStation specifically has been, as we've seen in other articles we've talked about, the margin tightening up. When the margin tightens, you're making less money for every dollar spent to make that money. So, you know, you'd hope if you spend a dollar on R&D, on game development, on manufacturing consoles, all of that's split into this dollar. For every dollar you spend, you make $2. So, oh, we just basically made a, a dollar profit investing a dollar, right? The problem with, with PlayStation is that that margin has shrunk significantly they should be making like 20 cents for every dollar right now they're only making six and it's getting smaller and smaller as time goes by and one of the reasons for that is because they've wasted a ton of money on very big projects that have gone absolutely nowhere and this is something that uh Jor raptor tweeted out about look at this sony's live service strategy so far announced the last of us online canceled london studios fantasy game canceled deviation games title canceled horizon online conquered fair games marathon hell divers has actually released and has done well they first had 12 of these games planned to release before april of 2026 now it's down to six the others are delayed and we just heard that the twisted metal live service game has also been canceled so that's four of the 12 games they were working on are just completely gone now and this is Jim Ryan's doing. This is why I've said for months, it seemed to me that there was something fishy about Jim Ryan just magically retiring out of nowhere. It seemed to me like there might be something else going on that he might have been welcomed to retire because it's pretty rare for somebody to leave in the middle of a console generation. It's pretty, pretty odd. And this is starting to make a lot more sense because all these numbers and all these things we're finding out about now they knew six months ago they've seen this coming for a long time and so it makes sense that he might have been like yeah uh i'm just gonna leave before everybody starts to find out how terrible this has been going he doubled down on all of this he greenlit all of these projects honestly like th these three that have been canceled they're absolutely not making any money. Those just wasted tens or hundreds of millions of dollars that went nowhere. And then Concord, we know next to nothing about. Fair Games looks actually terrible. So that's probably also either canceled or going to get dumped or or delayed indefinitely. Or it releases and it's just a, a flop. Marathon, we still don't know much about it. But there is a lot of interest from the Destiny community because they're starting to get really fed up with Destiny. Concord, again, we just don't know anything about. Horizon, we know nothing about, but this has been a very, very expensive game. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that because they've also seen layoffs announced as part of this process. So there's there's just a handful of these things that have uh, stacked where Sony is just wasting money on live service games that are never seeing the light of day or that don't turn a profit and end up being just a total waste of time. And... Uh, part of the, the reevaluation, I think, has come from the current COO that has taken over as managing director of PlayStation or managing CEO, interim CEO. And he's coming in and kind of reevaluating everything and pushing Herman Hulst, who's the former, uh, one of the former head honchos at Guerrilla Games, and they're trying to reevaluate the whole business. Uh, PlayStation Studios boss, whoops, Herman Hulst said that the platform holder is reevaluating how we operate as part of its decision to lay off 900 employees worldwide. They are laying off people at Insomniac, at Naughty Dog, at Gorilla, at Fire Sprite, and London Studio, of course, is closing entirely. Um, 
He confirmed the layoffs have also resulted in the cancellation of unnamed game projects, which also certainly includes London Studios online co-op game set in a fantasy London. Quote, our goal at PlayStation Studios has been to make the best games for PlayStation fans, and our global community of studios represents some of the most creative and talented teams within the gaming industry. PlayStation 5 is in its fourth year, and we are at a stage where we need to step back and look at what our business needs. At the same time, our industry has experienced continuing and fundamental change, which affects how we all create play uh, and play games, whatever the hell that means. Delivering the immersive narrative-driven stories that PlayStation Studios is known for at the quality bar we aspire to requires a reevaluation of how we operate. Delivering and sustaining social online experiences, allowing PlayStation gamers to explore our worlds in different ways, as well as launching games on additional uh, devices such as PC and mobile requires a different approach and different resources. Basically, it just sounds like they've had a problem where they've realized they can't do the live service thing while also maintaining single player production at levels seen during the ps4 era and that's frustrating them because that used to be the thing that kind of bankrolled their whole operation and this entire year they have no first party playstation games coming out they just have nothing and what we've gotten from other first party studios like naughty dog have been nothing but like remakes and remasters for years so it's like what like what are you doing what have you been doing what is supposed to sell on the platform like selling ps5s is great but where playstation has the biggest margin are in their first party studio games where they make like 95 percent profit off of every sale like their their back end costs are negligible their marketing costs are negligible compared to the pure profit they make through playstation online store so it's like naturally they're trying to find ways to to fix that but they've just poured so much time and money into this live service experiment that they've just wasted tons of time and i think it was like it was a major major miscalculation on the part of jim ryan to say that like naughty dog could make the last of us part three while also producing a live service online game and it seems like just now they realized you can't do that that's not how this works and games like suicide squad killed the justice league are showing these big corporate execs you can't just you know take a, a single player studio have them make a a live service game and expect the audience to like it the game could even be pretty good but if the audience if the fan base is upset that you even dared to do that you're already fighting such a big uphill battle that it just you're you're really really fighting a, a difficult fight he of course doubles down on bringing games to additional devices like pc and mobile this only makes sense because it's just easy money. Like if you're going to develop a game such as The Last of Us Part 2, you would think that they just bring that to PC, um, like when the show season two launches and it sells tons of extra copies, even if it just sells just, even if it sells a million copies or a hundred thousand copies, whatever, that's still a hundred thousand copies more than they had before. And it's a lot easier to port a game than develop an entirely new one. So just do that. Just do that. Anyway, he continues on to take on these challenges. PlayStation Studios had to grow. We have brought brilliant and successful successful studios into our family. We have invested in new technology and partnerships. We've recruited talent from across our industry and beyond. But growth itself is not an ambition. PlayStation Studios is committed to continually discovering ways to work together, collaborating and combining our efforts to ensure that we are able to craft games that push the boundaries of play and deliver what you expect from us. This to me sounds like yeah, we expanded too much and now we need to cut the fat because we realized we bought a bunch of studios and we've hired more people than we actually need. And and like, again, th th there's no way to say this without just being unpopular. Just because you have somebody employed to do a certain job does not mean that job pays for itself, right? Like if I right now hire a guy and I pay him, I don't know, $100,000 a year and all he does is take my main channel videos and live channel videos and upload them to rumble that's all he does he's working he's working he's making good money working but i'm probably gonna make nothing on that process right it would be a total waste of time of money and effort for basically no benefit except maybe three dollars of of ad revenue and a bunch of brand damage because i'm on rumble um <laughs> so like it wouldn't actually 
be helpful, right? But when I, like in these cases, often, you know, you'll see the studio do something like that, where they have a team working on a live service game that's never gonna turn a profit or developing a game that's so niche, it doesn't really justify its cost. And then they'll fire those people and lay them off. And of course, then they look really, really bad, but it's kind of a two double-edged sword. It's not the employee's fault they were hired for a job that wasn't profitable. That's the executive's fault for expanding too much and hiring somebody to do something that wasn't profitable. That's their fault for, for doing that. At the same time, like, what, what would you have them do? Not, like, continue paying them to do nothing, you know? I'll take 80K for uploading the kick for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, start streaming on kick too. All of this to say, the executives, they screw up. They hire too many people and then, um, you know, they hire a bunch of people on that they, they have to then get rid of because it doesn't make sense to keep them on if they're just burning through, through money. So then they lay those people off. So they look like double idiots because they hired when they shouldn't and greenlit projects they shouldn't have. And then they fire them in, in crude ways. But I mean, again, what makes all this particularly sucky is that like Jim Ryan went to PlayStation Studios London and like actually shook hands and rubbed elbows with these people before he screwed them over and fired them all, which is just really gross. Really, really gross. Um, we looked at our studios in our portfolio, evaluating projects in various stages of development. That's good, you should do that. Um, and I've decided that some of those projects will not move forward. I wanted to be clear that the decision to stop work on these projects is not a reflection on the talent or passion of the team members. This is something I do think they deserve a little bit of credit for. Whenever we hear about game cancellations, a lot of people immediately jump to, oh, greedy executives or terrible managers or whatever. That plays into it. I, I would agree because they shouldn't have greenlit the projects in the first place, but sometimes projects are canceled because they honestly are not coming together. Like one of them that got a lot of people upset back in the day was the cancellation of Santa Monica studios, new IP. Cause before they did God of War 2018, they were working on this like sci-fi game and it ended up being canceled and, and shut down. And then they moved everybody over to God of War 2018 ended up being a really good thing, right? Cause they didn't waste time on the sci-fi thing. They got to just focus on the God of War thing. But at the time that the announcement hit that they were canceling this new sci-fi game they were working on, everybody was like, oh my God, this is terrible. How could they cancel this? This is unbelievable. But it's like, sometimes the game just wasn't very good. <laughs> you know, sometimes these executives uh, like Shohei Yoshida, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he sees or he knows what he's looking for when he plays a game's demo and tries it out and is testing to see if he thinks that it could actually work and turn into something useful. And if he's looking at the game and he's like, this just, this is never going to be successful. This just is, it's an interesting idea, but it's not coming together, figure it out. And then they shut it down and they moved on. Uh, I, I think that it's much better to cancel the game than to get like a suicide squad or to get a saints row or a forespoken those games you could have evaluated those a year or two before they launched looked at it and been like nope this is never gonna do well we need to either completely rework this or we need to just shut it down and try something else you know so i i tend to be a little more forgiving when i hear that projects have been canceled because i have not seen the game and if there was the chance that the game could make money, these executives would green light it. The fact that they shut it down to me says that they were so appalled <laughs> at the state of it or at just, they did not think it was coming together that they just decided to, to walk away from it. So I tend to be a little bit more forgiving when I hear about cancellations than some other people, I think. Our philosophy has always been to allow creative experimentation. Sometimes great ideas don't become great games. Sometimes a project is started with the best of intentions uh, before shifts within the market or industry result in a change of plan. Yeah, no, I, I think that this is a, a really good way of putting it. Sometimes great ideas don't become great games. It could have been the case with like that Last of Us Online game. I still hope we see that someday or a form of it someday because I can't imagine it was too terrible, but it probably was something where like you play it and after 10 hours or 20 hours, you're just kind of good. You've, you've done the thing and you don't need to do much more. And they just decided, hey, this doesn't work for a live service game uh, for a full release of it. Let's just keep it on the side. We'll put it in like our next game as a sort of side mode or as a free update to get people to buy the game again. But it's just not going to work for a full release. 
sometimes a cool idea like oh it's going to be basically a battle royale with the combat of the last of us part two that sounds really good at the outset but in practice it might not actually translate because they might have had to make like sacrifices graphically to get it running and all of a sudden the naughty dog amazing graphical fidelity is lost and you're like okay well this actually this isn't what i was hoping for you know I'm deeply saddened to see the talented individuals leave the company. I have so much admiration, appreciation, and respect for their work. PlayStation Studios will continue to be a creator-led organization driven by evolving our beloved franchises and bringing new gameplay experiences of the best quality to our fans. I don't think anybody cares, uh, frankly. I, I think that people are generally frustrated. I'm even starting to see a lot of PlayStation fanboys get frustrated with the direction the company has taken. PlayStation has pissed off investors because their margin has tightened so much when they should be expanding their lead over Xbox. Microsoft's margins are widening. They're actually starting to make more and more money as time goes by. Uh, and as uh, businesses like Game Pass start to expand and grow, they're actually doing better and better. PlayStation, the bigger the lead it gets over Xbox, the tighter the numbers become which is not how that's supposed to work. And it's all because of mismanagement at the very top from people like Jim Ryan. Greenlighting projects they should not have greenlit, uh, wasting time and money on projects that will never ever see the light of day. And there's no nobody to blame but, but those people at the very, very top. Because those lower level devs, the guys at, at Naughty Dog, the guys at London uh, Studio, Deviation Studios, or the guys working on the Twisted Metal live service game, these are all amazingly talented devs. It's not their fault that the executives greenlit these projects, told them this is what you're working on, and now are pulling the rug out from under them when they realize, oh no, this was a bad idea. It it lands on them. It's their fault. It's their fault. And I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really think that there probably was a, a welcoming to retirement from executives at Sony. I, I just don't get the sense that it's a coincidence that Jim Ryan is retiring right as PlayStation is experiencing all of these struggles, tightenings of margins to the point where investors cause the stock price to plummet. Like none of this is a coincidence. I don't, I don't think, you know, it's like they, they say one thing is an occurrence. Two things is a coincidence. Three times is a pattern. And in this case, there's like five or six things stacking up at once where it's like, Okay, I don't, I don't think Jim Ryan is just retiring because he was tired of the long flights. I think he's retiring because his bosses were very, very mad at him wasting all of this money and basically blowing what could have been the generation to, without a doubt, shut down all console competition. Instead, like they've, they've had a couple of big games and it just hasn't been a very exciting year or ex exciting generation, rather. It's been four years with a handful of pretty good games, but I, I don't think there's been anywhere near the consistent flow of phenomenal releases that we got last time around. Uh, in the PS4 generation, we just had the steady drip of like Bloodborns. And then, you know, you get a little bit of uh, maybe an Uncharted 4, and then you get maybe a little God of War 2018, and you get some Days Gone, and you get some Death Stranding, and you get The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima, and all of these games just start getting dripped in slowly, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And this time around, we, it's like, yeah, we have a remake and then a remaster that that's fine. <laughs> and we did get Helldivers, but funnily enough, Helldivers has actually been mostly successful on PC, it seems. Um, the numbers are somewhere between 60 and 75% uh, of players for Helldivers are apparently on PC. They haven't released exact numbers as far as I'm aware, but it's, it's something like 60, 70% of people that are playing that game are playing on PC. So... I mean, it's just, it's, it's maddening that this is happening in a time when they should be excelling, but it just goes to show you one, one anthropomorphized thumb can just drive a business into the ground. And it's not just, I think it's the, the fallacy of American businesses is that every business has to be totally heartless. The, these decisions affect human beings like green lighting a project at London studios that wasn't going to be successful lands on the people that greenlit it and for it to then collapse and you to fire all of these people because of it it's still your fault it's not their fault they did great work I'm sure on the game but if the concept wasn't right and you had them green light 
uh, greenlit and work on this for years and it goes nowhere and then you fire them all to punish them for it. It's ridiculous. Meanwhile, he retires with plenty of millions, just fine. And he got to meet with them and take pictures and smile and everybody got to suck up to him because he's the boss. He's the big guy in charge. You're not going to tell him off. So everybody's trying to be his best friend while he's there. And then he goes off and retires, not realizing they're cursing his very name <laughs> afterwards. Now I can't unsee the thumb. Well, let me just show you. I think it's pretty close. I, I think they're pretty close, honestly. I mean, it's kind of uncanny when, when you think about it. Can we just appreciate how unsettling this is too? Even their legs are thumbs. The whole thing is thumbs. It's really scary. <laughs> Spy Kids is classic, dude, for real. Spy Kids, man. What, what a what a day that was when I watched that for the first time. Anyway, anyway, so all of this to say, screw Jim Ryan. I think he's basically wasted four years of the PS5 gen. And now that he's leaving, it seems like even the most hardcore PlayStation fanboys are agreeing. Maybe this guy was bad for the business and was bad for PlayStation. And now we're starting to see the after effects. And it's going to be another year, basically, that we're going to um, see the trickle of the long lasting effects of his era and his time at the helm. Because there's going to be even more projects canceled. There's going to be even more live service games that release and flop. And it all just lands basically on his shoulders for pushing for that so hard. And it's what really sucks because he made those decisions, greenlit all of that, and he will be gone and he won't have to suffer any of the negative um, like press or reception because he'll be retired. He doesn't really care at that point. It's not his, his problem. It's going to be another year or two, but we'll see who they replace him with. The, the new guy that's currently acting CEO is the COO. And he's, I think, from the mobile division. He's a guy with a background in maximizing margins funnily enough uh which is apparently why the ceo of of playstation and the board put or the of uh, sony why the board put him in charge of playstation in the interim because his whole mo his whole modus operandi is finding ways to increase profitability and that's what they're trying to do at playstation right now that's why they're laying people off it's why they're going to cancel a bunch of projects there's probably in the next few months going to be even more projects canceled and even more layoffs and stuff. So I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. And we're probably only gonna to start to see PlayStation start to get back into the groove later next year, I think. I think there's gonna be a solid year where PlayStation is just kind of doing not much and it's gonna be a little weird. It's gonna be very, very quiet. Yeah, at least Jim allowed PC ports. Yeah, perhaps that's the, the one good thing that he did um, is that he greenlit those PC ports. Other than that, I really struggled to find anything that he did that was particularly useful or productive. Um, most of the things that have happened that were good during his tenure were greenlit by Sean Layden at the end of the PS4 era. So like Jim's whole thing was live service. That was his whole pitch was doubling the budget of the PlayStation portfolio development teams and everything. And spending that extra money to just do 12 live service games in the next two, three years. And all of that went nowhere. It just burnt cash. The only thing they've done that's made any money has been Helldivers. And even then it's not really clear just how much of a gap that closed. Because again, like these live service games, the whole idea is that you have one or two hits that pay for all of the failures and then make even more money on top of that. And Helldivers happens to be a, a game I don't think they were expecting to be huge uh, or very successful. And so it's not monetized out the ass. So it's not I, I like it's probably not printing money as much as they would have thought it would. Um, so anyway, anyway, so cheers, Jim. Go dry up. He took my thing. <laughs>